The New Testament of the Bible claims that over 500 people observed the resurrection of Jesus. Details are set forth in the four Gospels written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In a court of law, to determine whether the statements of these witnesses are true, we would try to corroborate the details of their stories with known facts. A false witness will stumble on the details. Today, almost every town, person, and event mentioned in the Gospels have now been verified, giving credibility to the stories. Applying the test to the Gospels, here are a few small examples of the methodology. The Gospels mention a fishing boat used by John. In 1986, a boat matching the description and dated to the first century was found near his home, Capernaum. Another example from the Gospel of Luke. Luke mentions that when soldiers came for Jesus before the crucifixion, his sweat was like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. Medical experts today know that this apparent sweating of blood resembles a medical condition triggered by extreme stress. The subcutaneous blood vessels rupture into the exocrine sweat glands, and the sweat looks like drops of blood. The important thing is that it's highly unlikely that anyone in the first century could have known this. It couldn't have been fabricated. By corroborating all the details of the gospel stories, then stringing the details together, we can learn that testimony in the Bible of the death and resurrection of Jesus is true. In addition, under a legal analysis, a court would also accept the conduct of these witnesses as extremely convincing proof of their credibility. All of the followers of Jesus suffered extensively. They were tortured and died for their beliefs. It's clear that they knew the resurrection occurred because they were there. And people do not die for what they know to be a lie. Yes, I think the accounts of the resurrection can be trusted, although there are many scholars who will doubt and question them, saying either that a resurrection is impossible or that what is meant is some type of spiritual resurrection, simply to give hope that we can live again without there being a real historical event behind it. But there actually is a problem with this theory from a Jewish point of view, and that is that in Judaism, uh, the hope of resurrection was something that came at the end of time, and although it was a physical resurrection, that is, it was coming back to life out of the dead, it, this was done physically at the end of time, and then the judgment would follow immediately. So had there been a fabrication of the resurrection by Jews that went in line with their doctrine, what the story they would have told would have been of Jesus raising up at the end of time, or expected to raise up at the end of time in order to, to experience the judgment. We know this from texts like 2 Maccabees 7. What in fact we have, however, is an immediate bodily resurrection. Jesus being raised from the dead three days after he was crucified. There was no Jewish precedent for such a doctrine and thus no precedent for fabricating a story along those lines. Something else must have created that new doctrine and that something else was the resurrection from the dead.